Many events have speakers giving their speech for about 80% of the time and answering questions for the remaining 20%, sometimes even less. And that's a problem for participants. When I first sign up for an event, it's because of the topic or the speakers that I'm interested in and I want to engage further, so I signed up, right? But after the introduction and a few key slides, I already have questions built up in my head and some of them were already thought of before the event itself. And as I listen to the speaker more and more, I gradually develop an urge to ask those questions, only to be dismayed to find out that, okay, questions will only be answered at some point after the presentation. So slowly, my attention started to drift off as I grew less interested in what the speakers are saying, but more impatient to find out the answers of my questions. This is the problem that I have with speaking events today. Before I jump into a specific example, I just want to say that I'm using a recent online public event to illustrate what I see in speaking events in general, and it's not a direct critique of the specific example. Seedly recently held the Seedly Personal Finance Festival online and I really appreciate the effort that has gone into organizing this beneficial event for the community. I saw an interesting lineup of speakers that hit a chord with me. I saw also that it will be a live event so I was hoping that I can ask some questions and maybe they might just get answered by the speakers during the Q&A or hopefully during the presentation if that's possible. But the problem is they just might get answered Okay, so maybe I might find answers in the speech, so I dig in again to listen closely, but sooner or later, my attention span couldn't hold any longer and I'm actually not so interested to take in more information about what the speaker is saying already or the 11th tip that is being given out because I want answers to my questions. I wish that we can do things slightly differently. Like imagine a mid-session Q&A where questions can be answered live by the speakers. That would be such a win for participants because we feel engaged and we feel like our questions matter to the speakers, not like they only do it right at the very end. So I just read a book that talks about Oprah Winfrey and her insights after interviewing thousands and thousands of people on her show. And she believes that generally people want answers for these three questions. Can you hear me? Can you see me? And does what I say matter to you? Obviously, we're in the audience and it's a virtual event, so the, the speakers cannot see us and they cannot hear us. But unfortunately, many questions that we have in the audience were ignored. By the end of an event, only very few patient participants would stay till the very, very end to ask those questions. Some lucky people would have their needs met, and I estimate that maybe only 20% of people would experience this. But the rest of us, 80% who have questions, would have left the conversation mentally with the speaker. And while well, we may take away a set of slides that we will never refer to again, but we will still leave with many questions unanswered. As part of the 80%, I feel left out. Sometimes there's even no time for questions, right? And the host would say something like, okay, we'll answer your questions in the next forum, or send your questions via email and we'll answer them. But I think that these are lost opportunities to engage people on a more personal level. I once heard on a podcast, um, LinkedIn co-founder Ray Hoffman describing his theory on how to scale a business. And he said that it's by first doing the things that don't scale. He gave the famous example of uh, Airbnb in its early days when it struggled to attract guests to book homes. The turning point came when the founders went door to door to talk to hosts in person and got their feedback so that Airbnb could build something that really works for them. I think this principle helps us to understand our valuable customers inside out so that we can build something really specific just for them so that they will feel heard seen and their specific needs met. When you have thousands of questions coming in at you as a speaker, I understand that it's not scalable to answer every single one of them because it will take up too much time beyond the event itself. But every single question is a high probability opportunity to convert an active participant into a big follower or even a customer. That's why I'm big on the fact that hyper-personalization is the gold standard for running speaking events today. And we can do that by dedicating answers to each and every participant's questions. Some hosts um, would be more empathetic to group the questions together, summarize them, and then pose it to the speakers. I've seen events that will even allow a member of the audience to go unmute and speak, or basically hand them a mic. 
and that really makes the person feel heard. Some events that I see would use open Q&A platforms like Slido to invite the audience to post their questions on their mobile phones and the audience could also upvote their favourite questions. At least that helps to get the most burning question or the most popular question from the audience answered to benefit as many people as possible. The next level I've seen is to even make a video response to run through every single question and then publish a video answer with timestamps after the event and send it to the entire audience. Now that's hyper-personalization on the next level. Some people would disagree with me. For example, one commenter said that people shouldn't use this forum to ask um, questions for their personal benefit, such as asking specific stock tips or asking for crystal ball answers. And this question should be diverted to a separate forum, like a community forum. I wouldn't agree with this sentiment uh, because people personally turn up to a live session spending their real precious time because they want answers from somebody in that event that they know, like or trust, who are the speakers, right, in that case. Even if the questions are terribly phrased or go beyond the scope of what the speakers can legally say, I think that if speakers can answer the questions by saying something like, thank you for your question, um, we're unable to answer this one due to X, but here's where you can go to for more information. I think that would be much better than just simply leaving the question unanswered, which makes us feel ignored. I see this happening again and again in internal company events, live conferences, and even in closed door seminars, which are absolutely boring because they don't engage the audience or answer enough questions. At the same time, I understand that speakers have an agenda. They have check boxes of content that they want to deliver to an audience, or they could be producers or decision makers pulling strings behind the scenes, dictating that this is what you must talk about. But I feel that this can often be a one-way relationship only, especially if the message is not personalized because most people on the other side in the audience would just be passive listeners for information only. I see marketing professionals say that it is going to be the future of internet marketing. Practically, it's like attending an event that offers exactly what you want, what you ask for in real time. Like, just imagine that. It's flattering and it makes us feel good. I believe that if speakers can offer that level of engagement, the whole event will be much more beneficial for the speakers and for the audience. So let me know what you think in the comments below, whether you disagree or agree with me. I love to know both sides. And thanks for watching this video and I hope to see you in my next one.